Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I run EdTech Classroom, the blog, podcast, and of course, YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing five different games and activities to try with your students to help build classroom community. Now I came up with the ideas in today's video with elementary age students in mind, but if you do teach older students, I still think that the games and activities in today's video will still be fun to try out with your students. So without further ado, let's get started. The first game on my list is called the lineup game. The lineup game is so much fun to play with students because you can play it with almost any age group. I played this game as an adult when I was in graduate school, and I played this game with my elementary students. The way this game works is very similar to how it sounds. You have your students line up in a specific order in a certain amount of time. So for example, you could have your students line up in order of their birthday, starting with January 1st at the beginning of the line and December 31st at the end of the line. Typically when I play this game with students, I have done this birthday approach. However, you can also have students line up in a different order. You could have your students line up alphabetically based off of their first name. You could have them line up in rainbow order based on what color shirt they're wearing. Now the catch is students will have to play this game silently. So students are going to play this game silently, which means that they're going to have to come up with creative ways to be able to communicate with each other, which makes this game extra challenging and extra fun for students. This will require them to use their problem solving skills, their communication skills, and to figure out a strategy to line up in the correct order. If you teach older students, another way that you can make this game more challenging is you can also decrease the amount of time that they have to line up in a specific order. So you can really pick whatever time you think might make sense for your group of students, but if you teach older students, I recommend keeping it to a really short amount of time. That way they have to figure out a strategy really quickly in order to beat the clock. The next game on my list is called Emoji Charades. With Emoji Charades, students will need to first get started by picking a TV show, a movie, or a book. And then they will need to describe that TV show, movie, or book using only emojis. So the way this works is I recommend that students get started first by pulling up a blank Google Doc or Word document, and then they'll need to come up with a way to describe their TV show, movie, or book using only emojis. Then once they're done, they can take turns guessing each other's selection. I recommend starting off this activity also with modeling this for students. So on the screen here, I've included a couple different examples. First, we have Harry Potter, we have Frozen, and we have the Hungry Caterpillar. So you can show students different examples like the ones you see on the screen here to help give them some inspiration before they get started. Next, we have a very simple game that helps get students moving, this or that. This or that is very simple. It's very straightforward. The way I like to play this game with students is I actually like to physically divide the classroom into two different parts, a left side and a right side. To do this, I often will use a piece of painter's tape. However, if you'd like, you can also just have students divide the room in their imagination. Then you're going to ask students a couple of different prompts. So you might start off by saying something like, do you prefer tacos or pizza? Then students who prefer tacos will go to the left side of the room and students who prefer pizza will go to the right side of the room. Now, if you are looking for additional prompts, there are plenty on Google. Some of them are really silly. They're really fun. So I recommend doing a quick Google search of looking up this or that prompts to try out with students. Next on my list, we have some fun conversation starters. I think that conversation starters can be a really great icebreaker between students and a really great way to build classroom community. So the way that this activity works is it's very simple again. I recommend splitting your class up into two even groups and have them line up facing each other. So let's say you have 10 students on one side and 10 on the other and students are going to be facing each other directly. Then you can share a conversation starter or a discussion prompt with students and have them spend about 30 seconds each talking about their response to that question. So you might ask students a question like, if you were a superhero, what type of superpower would you want to have? Or you could ask them something like, tell us about a time when you were brave. Then once your students are done answering that discussion prompt, you can have them switch. And then when both parties are done responding to the question, you could have one side move over one person to the right. 
That way they can continue on the conversation with additional classmates. Another way that you can increase excitement with these discussion prompts is you can incorporate a digital spinner. So if you see on the screen here, we have a digital spinner that I put together. I'll have a link to this down below in the video description in case you want your own copy. You click on it, it'll spin, and then it'll select a discussion prompt for students. And last on my list, we have Guess Who. I like to play Guess Who once I know my students a little bit better. I think it just makes it that much more fun. The way that Guess Who works is it's going to be very similar to the actual board game Guess Who. Your students are going to try to ask you yes or no questions to guess who you are. What you are going to do is first you are going to randomly pick a student in your class. You can do this just by randomly selecting or you can draw a popsicle stick to decide who you are going to pretend to be for the purposes of the game. So then what students are going to do is they're going to ask you yes or no questions to try to guess who you are. So you are going to be answering those questions from the perspective of the student that you randomly selected. So students might ask you a question like, do you have brown eyes? And you're going to respond yes or no based off of what that student's answer would actually be. Now, the reason why I like to play this game once you've gotten to know your students a little bit better is then students can start asking more creative questions. Thank you so much for watching today's video with different games and activities to try with your students. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye friends.